Well, here we go then. In uh, in his waterproof over jacket, Jonathan Ray, all the riders wearing these plastic suits to keep the wet weather from soaking into their leathers. Pole position man for Red Bull Honda, Jonathan Ray, runner up in race one. And you can see a couple of the riders on the grid burning out the back tyre, spinning it on the spot to get a bit of heat into that tyre. That hopefully gets you a little bit of grip off the line. Race will be run over 20 laps, about 45 miles. Watch the red flag man at the head of the pack. Watch Jonathan Ray. Obviously, he did enough to get out in front and get clear vision all the way down. He's away. He got a very, very good start, the Red Bull Honda rider. Shane Byrne also a great start from row two. Shaky Byrne, Rutter, though, out in front, number three for Stobart Honda. The wet weather man, Tommy Hill, is going with him, number eight. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Ray from the out from pole position got he spun up off the line of the rear wheel spun he lost traction and he dropped right back into the pack he's about fifth or sixth now well it might not be a bad thing for Jonathan Ray because if he follows these riders he'll get some idea of the race pace Michael Rutter is well overdue a good result he's languishing in the championship third last year for Stobart Honda then Michael Rutter the established wet weather rider this race will be run, I'm just informed, over a reduced distance of 18 laps due to the, uh, they took obviously three warm-up laps to see where they were going. 18 laps then, so it's all the play for. And Greg Levia forcing his way past Virgin Mobile Yamaha's Tommy Hill there. In very, very forceful pass. Levia then in second place in front of Tommy Hill. Michael Rutter leading the charge. Yuichi Kiyonari is in fourth place on the HM Plant Honda as we speak. Carl Harris's teammate is with him there. The two HM Plant Hondas numbers two and nine locked together. There is Jonathan Ray in sixth, though the young man could do a lot worse than follow these guys. Ready goes underneath Carl Harris. Jonathan Ray is not going to follow these guys round. He's going to mix it. Kiyonari going underneath Tommy Hill. So Kiyonari knows that his 17 point championship lead is very, very small indeed. We still have, including this one, seven races ahead of us before the end of the season and 225 points with double points of brands up for grabs. So everything is very finely poised going into the final third of the season. Yeah, in actual fact, these riders are really, you, you, you do not want to be running behind, directly behind the rider in front because these conditions, all the spray comes off his bike and onto your visor, onto your screen, and it's impossible to see when you're running behind a rider. Rutter's lead, half a second over Greg Levia. Good to see Michael Rutter. There is Kianari, number two in third. Carl Harris, who had the misfortune of going off the circuit in the first race, recovered to the lower order of the points, but he's obviously got to do a little bit better. He was disappointed with his own performance, but he's shadowing his teammate now. Jonathan Ray, in fifth place, is right with them. Yeah, and this is, there's something hanging off Jonathan Ray's either bike or leathers, I think there's some strap, there's some strap moving, you'll, you'll see in a minute, some tape or some strap dangling from his bike. It's the strap which secures the bottom half of his water. Ah, suit. it's his little gusset strap. Absolutely, well, I hope it doesn't get caught up in any of the moving parts, even so, I'm pretty sure it would tear it off and away safely, but it's a really close battle now. Jonathan Ray is right there. And you'll see, if you get a look at the knee sliders, the knee sliders are generally, most riders are double thickness knee sliders. So in actual fact, the, the, the lean angle, obviously the grip's not as good, the lean angle's not as much in the way, so they have double knee sliders to touch on the floor, they can still gauge their angle. That's a very good point, yeah, so the knee act, acting as a dipstick, they can feel how far they are over. Fifth place, Jonathan Ray, Leon Haslam, number 91, coming into shot now on the Airways Ducati. He is in sixth, second place in the championship for Haslam, and he's not in a strong points position at the moment. He's in a 10-point place. Rutter, though, on for 25 points, but an awful long way to go on lap three of 18 in appalling conditions. But as you said earlier on, James, at least they are consistent. Yeah, they know it's wet. Sometimes it's easier when it's conditions like this than it is when it's half wet, half dry, and raining around some certain parts of the circuit and dry around others. So at least they all know what the, uh, what the crack is now. It's wet and it's going to stay wet. I'm talking about it's a cracking race, it really is. We have four men within 0.3 of a second of each other. And here really comes Harris. Close. He's got past his teammate now, and he's right on the back of Greg Levia and looks to be the fastest man on the circuit at this time. Well, Carl Harris has done Levia a big favour by passing Kianari because he shoved him further down the points order. Here comes the number nine HM plant rider, Carl Harris. Let's just hope he doesn't overcook it. Race leader, Michael Rutter, Stobart Honda. 
then it's Gregorio Oliveira, Airways Ducati. We, are, we know the capability of the Spaniard. There's Harris looking at the inside. They are at the hairpin. You can see the shot from our elevated camera, and you can see how wet it is up there. Yeah, one of the problems going out of the hairpin here at Croft is the fact that the white lines for the car grid, the car grid's a lot bigger than the back grid, and going over, lint over, powering out the hairpin, going over that pin, you get a slide every time that somebody's off. That's Martin Nult. You can see the M on the front of his helmet and the N on the back. One of the cup riders then, uh, son of Billy Nutt, one of the great Irish race organisers over in Ulster. And uh, race leader Michael Rutter then leading this chasing pack. They are really close. 1.7 seconds separating the top five. Yeah. Look at Harris lining up Lavia, having a look on the inside, being very cautious on the front brake as he puts it into there. This is oh, that's somebody off. That's Haslam. No, it is Jonathan Ray. Jonathan Ray has dumped the Red Bull Honda. Oh. Jonathan Ray then off the Red Bull Honda. What a shame for him. Let's see. First time we've seen the young man make a mistake. Too much front brake or what? Yeah, he lost the front end going into tower, and that's about... I mean, it's easy done, so easy done. He might have done nothing wrong, just hit a, wet, a, a slippy patch, and that's unfortunate for Jonathan Ray. Well, by his own admission, he's not experienced in these conditions. Now Harris up to second, he's gone past Lavia. Carl Harris in second place in a 20-point position, chasing down Michael Rutter who's pussyfooting round here, but really setting the standard. Rutter's last lap, 131.3. Harris did a 130.824, so he's, and on, that, he's on the charge. That's about right, buddy. What they say is you should be able to lap a good rider on good weight, should be able to lap about 10% slower, and that's about what it is. It's about 10% slower at this time. Rutter leads, number three, Stobart Honda, HM Plant Honda, Carl Harris. Uh, Harris needs to do something desperately because he came into this championship. And up he goes, up the there he goes, through on the inside, he's done it. Through on the inside of Michael Rutter, Rutter then in second, Harris in the lead, Lavia in third, Keo still in fourth. This is Greg's chance to do something, but Haslam is now breathing down the neck of Kianari in fifth place. And you've got to think that Harris is going so much quicker than anybody else now. Oh, this is this is going in. This is actually um, it's actually you're going into the chicane. It's actually around Hawthorne, and basically just goes straight up the inside of Rutter, and there's no way back. There's a single line through that chicane. Perfect. And I'm, I was just saying, Barrett, Harris is going pretty much uh, quite a bit quicker than anybody else, and you've always got to be you've always got to wonder if is he going to be keep it up and not make one single mistake to the end of this, just one little small tiny mistake, you run on a white line, you get it just a little bit wrong, you open the throttle a little bit early, you hit the brake just slightly too hard, and that can all end in tears when in these conditions. Well, we often talk about the little fuse that goes off or doesn't go off in a rider's head. Does he know where to ride through that fuse? Lavia now looking at Rutter. Rutter still in second place, but Gregorio Lavia knows that he needs to put the Stobart Honda between himself and Yuichi Kianari. Leon Haslam now is closing on the back of Kianari. Down the straight, Lavia looking at the inside. No. Now that's a that's a 129 from the race leader. That's Haslam Kianari. goes underneath Kia, sorry James, underneath Kianari up to fourth. That has done Lavia a huge favour. So the Airwaves Ducati rider doing his teammate a power of good there because this will now close the points up. Kianari down in fourth. And it looks as though that's where he's going to stay. And I'll tell you what, Barry, though, he's not doing it to uh, help his teammate uh, at all. He's doing it because, uh, I mean, although it's a, it, it's, you talk about teams, this team's that teammates, it's a, this is an individual sport. There we go, then. Lavia moves ahead, and he's ahead now. And look at the racing. Rutter was fighting back. Lavia then clear, race leader. No, he's not. Harris out in front of Pekin Park. We're looking at this battle for second place. Lavia Harris is away. Terrific track. Rutter hasn't given up. Has yeah, he? that's going. In, that's actually going into Tower, the place we've seen a lot of passing today. Rutter goes very, very tight. That sends him so wide on the exit, it pushes him way, way out. Lavia just tucks it up the inside, and then the next corner's a left-hander, and Lavia got there first. Well, Rutter was thrown all at sea by that move. There's Carl Harris, the race leader. The gap now, 1.6. Seconds. Harris then out in front, looking good. He's well. This is something good to see. It's good to see Carl Harris riding in this position. He needed the points. He had a bit of an upset, scraped a few points in race one. And uh, our Jane spoke to him, and he was a little bit bemused. He couldn't 
understand quite why he couldn't get going any quicker, but he's certainly obviously got his head in gear this time. Yeah, certainly he's, uh, he's relishing these conditions. And sometimes in the way, when you get to the front, it's easier just to keep going at the pace you need it to go to catch up. And just to, you know, it's easier, instead of settling down, thinking I'm pulling away a second a lap, it's easier just to keep going at that pace and you're less likely to make a mistake. Well, talking of lap time, 128.73 that time. So Harris is lapping significantly quicker than the second and third place man. Three on the bike, third in the race for Michael Rutter. Leon Haslam then also closing in on Michael Rutter. Here's your race leader, HM Plant Honda's Carl Harris on a 25-point place at the moment. Six laps completed. We are on lap seven of 18. Levia from Rutter. Levia looking smooth. We know how good he is in the wet because he's demonstrated it many times. Yeah, the man on the move is uh, that man there's teammate. It's Levia's teammate, Leon Haslam, now making... He looks to be getting very, very close to me on Michael Rutter. Yeah, 91 Haslam, who sits in second place in the championship at the moment on 282 points, is in a 16-point place at the moment. His teammate is in a 13-point place. His teammate is in a 20-point place. So the way things are at the moment, Lavia will move ahead of Haslam again in the championship. And Kianari now is being dropped off the back of this quartet, but he's in fairly safe hands in fifth place because Michael Laverty, Michael Rutter's teammate, is some five seconds adrift of Kianari. This then, the battle for fourth. Third, in actual fact, Michael Rutter in third. He's got it, Haslam wants it. And can you believe the fastest lap of the race so far has just been set by Shane Byrne, who is lying in sixth place. Uh, Haslam goes at the inside, oh, and that's punted him both wide. Nice, that that's... That wasn't a good move by Aslam. He went up the inside into tower and then couldn't stop and took both himself and Rutter wide onto the grass. Smacks of desperation that from Leon. Shane Byrne has gone past. So Michael Rutter has now been passed by his teammate Michael Laverty. He's been pushed all the way Watch down this. the order. On the brakes, into tower. Loses the back end as Aslam going. He can't make it, has to go straight. Neither of them can tip into the corner, and that's terrible for Rutter. Good reactions by Michael Rutter to avoid Leon Haslam charging up the inside. There might be a few words afterwards. What that's done is promote number 67, Rizla Suzuki, Shane Byrne, moving out and shot there up into sixth place. Fifth place, in actual fact. There's Michael Rutter on lap eight. Shane Byrne then on the charge. And as James Whitton quite rightly said, quickest man on the circuit, except Harris has just gone quicker yet again. 128.184 for Harris, so not content with being out in the lead. He's stretching that gap. Burn then has got Kianari in sights. Now this is where the money is. I'm going to put some money on the table that Shaky Burn catches the young Japanese and nudges him back one more place. Yeah, well, I won't put, he's certainly capable of lapping about a second quicker than he looked from the time, so I would agree with you. It's damn visibility awful. Identification not that clever either. Um, fortunately, our cameras are staying mist-free. Even a slight celebration, really, from Shane Byrne. He obviously feels that he's riding well in these conditions. I don't I don't think he'll be celebrating yet, Barry. A lot can happen in 10 laps. And don't forget, he was the man who pulled out of the very wet Donington race, saying, I don't know how you ride in these conditions. That's uh, not what I want to be doing. But there you have it. Race leader, number nine, HM. And I, on. I think he's gone. I'm not sure whether Shane Byrne's still there. Well, we shall see. We're looking at the race leader at the moment. The chasing bunch is now some six seconds behind this man, who looks in supreme control here, almost imperious. He's really got his act together. This, no is, doubt about this is some ride by Harris. It really is. Good to see as well, and we hope he gets it all the way through to the flag, of course. Half distance on lap nine of 18. Here comes Levia, Haslam with him, so the battle on between the two Airways Ducati boys. Here comes Kianari, there's Shaky Byrne, still in the running, Shane Byrne is there. Michael Laverty is in sixth, Michael Rutter has regained his composure in seventh. Oh, Haslam oh. running a little bit wide there, nearly on the white line, yeah, and, he's and pushing it. You saw that when he, he knew he was going to go on the white line, he sat the bike up, closed the throttle off slightly. If you hit that white line, any lead angle or any throttle on, it's going to pitch you off. Well, the two Ducatis now have shaken off Kianari. He's five and a half seconds adrift 
Haslam has to get past all oh, the rear end of the number 91 Airways Ducati stepping out. Haslam has to get past his teammate. Well, we know what happened between Haslam and Rutte. He don't really want to do that to his teammates. It's going to be a fairly frosty atmosphere in the garage when they get back. Well, we shall see. Colin Wright, the team boss for Airways Ducati, will certainly be watching. <laughs> that he is. As we speak, there he is watching intently. He's seen these two attackers drawn before. Doesn't want to see a replay of what we saw at Cadwell Park a season ago. Lavia is competently riding round in that 20-point place. He's riding very, very steadily, but he's got an angry young man behind him. He hasn't. It's always difficult in these conditions. As I say, he can make one little mistake and the concentration required. It's more demanding, certainly mentally, and more tiring mentally in these conditions than in the dry. Yuichi Kionari in fourth place has got Shane Byrne just one second behind. But we are watching the battle now for second place. Lavia, number one. Haslam, number 91. Teammates, not the best of buddies. That doesn't mean they don't get on, but they certainly don't go on holiday together. Oh, and that's Haslam across the paint again. And I'm seeing a blue flag being waved. That tells the slower men to get out of the way because they know the fast men are coming. The gap now nearly nine seconds is Carl Harris's advantage. And here comes Haslam. I think he's fancying a bit of a going to tower. Well, let's hope he keeps it all together. I, I don't think he would dare collect his teammate at this crucial stage in the championship, although Haslam yet to take a win this year has had so many podium and runner-up spots 14 times on the podium. He missed out in race one. Actually, fourth place was the best he could do. He's sitting in a third place and podium place at the moment and wants to go one better. He can see the points. He might as well, Lavia might as well have three points written on the back of his leathers. <laughs> in the middle of a target. In the middle of a target, yeah, absolutely. Four points, in fact, is the difference we're talking about between Lavia and Haslam's place. This will do Lavia a lot of good in the championship. He knows that Kianari, he will certainly know that Yuichi Kianari is down in fourth, and that gap now between Kianari and Shane Byrne is even narrower. Shaky Byrne could well be fourth the next time round but this is the battle for the runner-up spot at the moment look at them it's visible Kianari and Rizzo Suzuki Shane Byrne Shane Byrne gonna pop out of the slipstream is he down the inside no it's a little bit hairy there James how would you stop yeah one and, and there's a lot more paint as well there and, and to go up the inside there off the line and go to the wetter it's all wet but the, the puddly side of the track uh, it would be dodgy well, the here comes Haslam, Haslam. Here he oh, goes. drops straight past his teammate. Leon Haslam out of the slipstream, but Greg's on the inside line. Leon's got the knee out, which basically says, I'm turning right, mate, and turn right. He does He's got got right, too fast. Haslam ran wide, but he's kept it all together. He's got the runner-up spot, 20 points ahead of Lavia, his teammate. And Lavia can now see his teammate making his championship more difficult. Yeah, sorry, man, I got confused there. That's... This is the pass coming out of the chicane. Haslam just gets a lot of drive and down the back straight just is able to drive past his teammate. We all get confused, James. We do, teams. and then into tower. Haslam ran wide and nearly let his teammate back, but now Haslam's pulling away. Now he's got a relatively clear track ahead of him and between him and the race leader, Carl Harris, but Harris is riding so well, the gap's still eight and three quarter seconds. So whether Haslam could do anything, um, Six and a bit, five and a bit laps remaining. There's the race leader. There is Leon Haslam. It's the length of the start finish straight. It's a tough call in these conditions. Yeah, and to be honest, I don't think Haslam will be thinking, yeah, that's Shaky in front of Keo now. That's fourth place for Shaky Shaneburn. Well, this is really going to sort out the championship because Yuichi Kionari is now down in an 11 point place. So his lead will be severely dented. Lavia will move up, Haslam will move up. We are going to be so close if things stay the way they are. Carl, Carl Harris has really thrown a spanner in the works for his teammate. Uh, but Harris doesn't care, he's going to march on to 25 points. Yeah, not only that, you could argue that Harris is actually taking points off, or taking the big points off other people, which is helping his teammate. That is true, that is true. On lap 13 then, of 18. Harris, oh, look at the way he chucks it in now. Careless abandon, I think. Uh, I remember many years ago there was a, 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 a guy called Carlos Lovado who raced under the name of Carlos Lovado. Well, yeah, two, <laughs> 250 GP, man. Excellent. 
Venezuelan, I believe, but yep, we're seeing very quick. Sheffield's own Carl Harris on the HM plant Honda giving an absolutely masterful display here at a soggy croft. Yeah, this is a wet weather demonstration by Carl Harris. Nothing more you can say. Fantastic riding. Well, no doubting his talent, immensely talented. His team boss, Tom, the guy who works on that bike for him, said that quite often Carl has a problem converting what he wants from the bike into a description and, in fact, instructions for the team. His talent is so high, he doesn't necessarily know how to make the adjustments and the minor setups that we need. So, certainly, what you're seeing here is raw talent, as indeed you're seeing raw talent from Leon Haslam. 22 years of age, Haslam, vastly experienced. And remember, all these bikes will have a completely different setting to the wet. You want to be basically using the same amount of suspension travelling the wet as what you are in the dry to get the geometry the same and get the bike seating the same. To do that, you have to slacken everything off, lighter springs, let... Oh, that's... that's that is Tommy. Tommy Hill. That's Tommy walking away. Tommy Hill has thrown yeah. the number eight Virgin Mobile Yamaha away. He was running in 12th place, so that's a sad day for him. Great pity for Tommy Hill. But I, I'm going to build the suspense here, because what I can tell you is that Haslam is now just six seconds adrift of Carl Harris. And I just yeah. wonder if there's anything left. And he's just put the fastest lap of the racing by quite a margin here, 127.8. Nine, six, and I cannot tell you, as an ex-rider, how impressive that is in these conditions. Well, let's just hope that Leon Haslam doesn't throw it away, because it looks to me as though it's drying just a little bit. I know the rain's still no, falling, but it's... It's not, it's not actually drying. What it's doing is it, it's, it's clearing the light water from the racing line, but you can still see his spray coming up. That is still very, very wet, let me tell you. There's the gap. It is no longer a full length of the start-finish straight. It's about half a length of the start-finish straight. Down two to seconds. four seconds, yeah. Two seconds on that lap. 2.2 .2 seconds on that lap. This is on. And let's, uh, let me tell you that these guys, the race leader and the chap you're looking at now, Leon Haslam, are the best of friends. Uh, both came up under the guidance in the early days of Ron Haslam, so they know each other very well. And in fact, they play golf together on a fairly regular basis as well. They're both uh, keen and fairly good golf uh, golfers. Well, I wonder if that's going through Leon Haslam's head as he's closing in on Carl Harris. He might think he's on the 15th tee, but what he's actually on is the 15th lap. And he's coming. Here we go, Leon Haslam, is this going to be victory number one? The suspense is building now into the latter laps of this terrific uh, round 10, race two, British Superbike Championship here well, at Croft. I'll tell you something, he's certainly that man there, Leon Haslam, thinks he can catch his good friend, uh, Carl Harris, because he's pushing on so fast. If he'd have given up any chance of winning this race, in his mind, he wouldn't be pushing on at 27. Well, a further five seconds back now off this man is his teammate, Gregorio Levia. Five seconds behind that in fourth place, Shane Byrne. And I tell you what, Michael Laverty in six is closing on Yuichi Kianari. And so maybe Kianari will go further down the we order. We need to see what the gap is at the end of this lap. They're just about to go to the start and finish, and we'll give you the time as soon as we get it. It'll be under There's four. Haslam over the line. Harris over. Three, he's down to three points. He's, he's, he's pulled another one second off him. He's that taking lap. a second a lap. So Leon Haslam, number 91 on the Airways Ducati, using all the track and more, has taken a second again out of Carl Harris's lead. And he's pushing on so quick. He definitely, definitely thinks he can win this race. It's just a matter now of whether Harris has seen his lap board and he can respond to that. Well, one or the other of these guys might just respond a little bit too much. I talked about that little fuse, that little danger signal, that buzzer that goes off in the brain, or yeah. sometimes doesn't. Haslam ran so wide onto the wet part of the track, and I think it, I think we've seen here Leon Haslam, that man there, pushing just a little bit too hard. 91 then for Airwaves Ducati. 14 times on the podium this season. A whole string of runner-ups but no win in 2006. That elusive victory is still tantalizingly close now for Leon Haslam, number 91. Can he? We are on lap 16, two and a bit laps remaining. He's got to close the race leader down, and having closed him down, he's then got to get past. That'll be a tough And goal. I think he's pulled about another half second back, just visibly, I think he's pulled about another half second back on that lap. He's got two laps to do it, he would have to pull back one and a half to two seconds a lap, and I don't think he can do it. Well, it's, it's a, nice terrific, try, a terrific effort. Let's see what the gap is. 
2.6, 2.6 seconds now the gap. It's tumbling lap after lap after lap and Haslam really now can see the man ahead of him and that is the carrot on the end of the stick, James. What's going through his head now? Well, the dog has definitely seen the rabbit in this case, but I, I, I think you'll see that the rabbit has actually seen his lap board and can just about just lap another half second quicker. He needs to do more than half second, which he did on last lap. He lapped half a second quicker than Harris, and it's not enough. He needs to lap. He's, well, he's got a pull, I guess, two seconds, and he's running so wide. This is Leon Rudd trying very, very hard, and I think he's trying a bit too hard. On the penultimate lap, but he's closing, visibly closing, closing, closing. The HM Plant Honda of Carl Harris, the race leader, out there on Michelin rubber. The Airways Ducati of Leon Haslam, this man on Dunlop rubber. Everybody, of course, on full wet tyres. There is a tail ender. There is a back marker ahead of the race leader. Let's hope, for goodness sake, it's Craig Sprost, and I hope he knows that the fast men are coming. He doesn't. He, he doesn't. certainly does. He's pulled Hazel across. He and has. And it's had to swap from the inside to the outside to get past Craig Sproston. And this is Haslam very... I, just, I cannot believe that he's going to catch him. Well, let's hope it doesn't end in tears. It's really close. When they go over the line this time, there will be one lap, 2.176 miles remaining. I don't know. The HM plant Honda just bulleted out of the bend there. Unless Harris makes a mistake, I don't think there's any way that Haslam can catch him. 1.4 seconds, Haslam will have to eat out of that lead before, between now and the chequered flag. It's a terrifically gripping race here at Crop. Haslam stayed tighter that time. He's, that was a better line and another tail ender. This is so... It, it, I tell you, Haslam might just do it. He could just do it, Barry. Brilliant stuff from Leon Haslam. Is it going to be a victory for him or is he going to just overcook it? Carl Harris will know he's coming. Equally, it will be good to see Harris take the win. I cannot take sides, but the two guys who are such good friends are going to be battling James all the way to the flag. This is close. This is going to be so close. And if Haslam catches him, you've got to think he'd ever go passing him somewhere this last day. We've got half a lap left. Look, here comes Haslam. Closing now then on Carl Harris, the Airwaves Ducati rider. I doubt if they can even breathe in the Airwaves pit. He's on him. Carl Harris then has got Leon Haslam breathing down his neck. We are into the closing He's stage. Gonna do it. He's at the inside. He's Haslam is through. It. Is he going to hold it all together? Is this going to be a victory for Leon Haslam? Fantastic stuff. I'm sorry, we're into the complex, James. We'll have a chat after. This is the airpin, just the airpin leg. As a hairpin. Haslam then, no Harris way. looking tight, Haslam sprinting to the flag, is it 25 points? It is the chequered flag, and the first win in 2006 goes to Airwaves Ducati's Leon Haslam. Well, we are bubbling over in here, what a terrific race. Unbelievable win by Leon Haslam, unbelievable. He pulled back over almost two seconds in one lap. Oh, we'll come down off the ceiling because I have to tell you, Lavia got third from Bern. Kionari fended off a late challenge from Michael Rutter, who recovered to go past his number 33 teammate. But the rear tyre smoking, a debut victory in 2006 for Leon Haslam, putting him very much, James, on target for the title. Absolutely, and he just showed his metal. He caught, he caught Harris, and and he just, you just knew he'd done all the work to catch him. There's no way he was going to let him off with uh, not having it a go, a, a go passing him into the complex, a left on the complex, and that's the best part of 80 mile an hour, even in this weather. Well, Phil oh. Plater for Dunlop, cuddling Ollie, or giving her a celebratory cuddle. She is the young lady of Leon Haslam. So it's been a long time coming. He's been out in the wilderness of runner-up spots, thirds, 14 podium places, but at Croft in race two of round 10, he did it. Haslam, all is in tears, we nearly are. And he couldn't, have, he couldn't have done it in a more exciting or uh, impressive way than he just did then. All the experience imparted to this man by his father, Ron, I suspect, came into play then. Yeah, remember, we keep talking about it like he's an old timer, a veteran. He's still only 21 years old, is Leon. 22. Oh, he's 22. Yeah, he's aging like all of us. All oh, right, he's past him. There he goes. <laughs> there goes <laughs> the wheel. 22. Standing the Ducati up on its back wheel. Terrific ride by Leon Haslam. What a win for him. That has really put the cat among the pigeons in terms of the championship. And we cannot ignore that storming ride by Shane Byrne through to fourth place. He'll be pleased with that. Yeah, he's got to be. He didn't make the best of starts. He came through, fastest lap of the race in the middle of the race, and then it was retaken by Haslam. But, uh, I mean, yeah, good ride by Shane, but...
the, the story of the race is uh, Haslam's rush for the win there. Fantastic. I just wonder if there will be words between Leon and Michael Rutter because that was a very, very close call. But uh, there in the park, firm, a race winner. It's been a long time coming, as I say. But he is absolutely delighted. Carl Harris, the first man to give him a slap on the back. Well, you did it, mate. Leon's thrilled. There's Ron Haslam. The whole team. What a good feeling that must be. Yeah, there's no better feeling than that. And especially in such tricky conditions, easy to make a mistake. And when you've come from so far behind, unbelievable. Simon Bentley there from Dunlop. There, Dave Parks as well. Leon's engineer. And That's there, mom. there's mother. Yeah. Anne has That's it. That's Anne. Well, she has uh, this horrible feeling when her son goes racing. She closes her eyes sometimes, but this is the good bit. Oh, this is a bit you dream of. Well, there he is, Leon Haslam, then. First victory this year. I think his eyes tell the story. He is buzzing, and he knows. No one will be more acutely aware of Leon than what that means in the title. Stuart Hicks, race director, shook his hand. Well, that's really shaken the job up and uh, a good result for Airwaves Ducati. A thrilling, thrilling ride. He was the quickest man here in testing at Croft a few weeks ago, So, uh, and he was the quickest man round here in a lot of the, the qualifying as well. Have you worked out what he's done with the championship, Barry? No, but if you keep talking, I'll do some sums. <laughs> I reckon, is that, just off the top of my head, is that not... Uh, is that not Leon maybe just sneaking the lead of the championship? Well, Leon, if we had 25 points, is on 307. And Keen Harry ended up fifth. He gets 11, so he is on. Has him maybe three points behind he is. in second. Three, oh, three points, it's that so close. It's still Keo in the lead. And Lavia there, still very much in touch. It's really closed the job up, and it it's built a wonderful prospect for Cadwell Park. This is a forget, proper championship now. Yeah, when we get to Brands Hatch, we've got double points to play for. So it could all go down to the double points, two races at Brands Hatch. Yep. Terrific. Lavia getting out of his wet weather gear. We're going to take a breather now. We'll hand you back to Angus.